So welcome again to our special interest group session for February 2021. This is a STAD special interest group session. We are going to be talking about standard versus custom sections within STAD Pro and how it relates to your steel optimization workflow. Now, before we get into that too far, let me also introduce myself. My name is Sabrina Tedeschi, and I will be guiding you through this topic today. Just to give you a little background on myself, I am a structural engineer and I've been with Bentley Systems for over 12 years. Working for Bentley Systems, I conduct special interest group sessions. I also create some of our training courses and provide training through our Bentley Learn server. Now, before working for Bentley Systems, I did work in the industry for an architectural engineering firm where I designed large commercial structures out of a variety of materials, including steel and concrete. Now, before we dive into our topic, let me give you a brief description about what you can expect today. So as a reminder, we do conduct STAD special interest group sessions typically once a month and typically on the third Thursday of the month at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do take two hiatus months throughout the year, so you can basically expect 10 of these sessions per calendar year in the United States. As a reminder, these are complimentary Okay. As a reminder, these are complimentary sessions, and we do try to cover a variety of topics. Now, if you're located outside the United States, we also do have several uh, international special interest group sessions planned for 2021. In those sessions, we do conduct them in different time zones. Also, we occasionally cover other types of codes, international codes, and so forth. Now, as we make our way through this session today, I'm going to ask everybody to mute their microphones. I'm trying to keep ahead of it, but it seems like when people are entering, I am muting them. So uh, if everybody can mute, I'm going to try for next time to ensure that the microphones are all muted um, upon, upon entering. Now, to communicate with me, you can also go ahead and access the chat window. That would be if you want to provide any uh, comments uh, to us. The chat window is open for everybody to be able to see. Uh, in addition to that, we also have a question and answer window uh, available. If you have any questions, you can feel free to add them at any point. I'm going to be conducting most of the special interest group session using some material that I have for this planned topic, and I will have some time available at the end for the questions. So I'll probably show uh, keep the questions to the end. If anybody has any technical difficulties, say, for example, my microphone cuts out or my screen goes out, please go to the chat window and if someone could just let me know that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and keep going on this introduction to our special interest group sessions. All of the special interest group sessions at Bentley Systems are recorded. If you're looking for a special interest group session that was conducted in 2020, you can go ahead and review those recordings through the Bentley events page. I will provide a link towards the ends of this session. If you're looking for anything earlier than 2020 or post 2020, we are, have all of those available on the Bentley Learn server. Again, I'm gonna provide a link to those videos directly. So if there's a topic that you missed, or again, if you're interested in some of those international special interest group sessions that we do conduct, those can all be found via the Bentley Learn server. We do provide one professional development hour through your Bentley transcript for anybody logging in to this session. And if you need any additional information, you can feel free to contact the Bentley Institute at bentley.institute at bentley.com. Let's also give you a quick tour of our WebEx environment. So through the WebEx, there is a widget available at the top of your screen. So if you would like to access things like the chat window or the question and answer window, those can be found at the top of the screen. You should also in the participant list be able to mute your microphone and so forth. Now after this session, say, give it a week, you should be able to access your certificate, which is your proof of attending this session. Okay, so we do say allow for three days up to a week for that to appear in your Bentley transcript. Again, you can access this through the Bentley Learn server. Go to My Learning History and your Bentley certificate will be available there and will be able to be printed 
for your records. Again, I'm going to provide a link directly to the certificates, not to the certificates, to the Bentley Learn server at the end of this session. Now that we have gone through all that information, let's go ahead and dive into what our topic is going to be uh, for today. Now, as I'm performing this, I am going to minimize some of the extra WebEx um, information, but I will get notification if there are any problems or anything like that throughout the session. Now, for today's session, I had originally planned to discuss how to create a user table for custom sections within STAD Pro. This is basically, in case you don't have uh, the section that you're looking for available in the standard database, how could you go ahead and incorporate it into your model? Now, upon preparing for the session, however, I decided that I wanted to take it maybe a step further. Um, I like to think of things as far as um, when I'm teaching a, a new topic to say, well, how am I going to use this? How am I going to incorporate it into your workflow? So we're going to actually take that a step further once I started preparing for this to say, well, why would we want to do this? How can I use it within my steel design workflow? And today is focused on steel design. So we're going to go through the databases that are available in STAD Pro. I'm going to show you how to create your own database. And then we're going to talk about how to incorporate it into your steel design, what rules we have to follow within STAD Pro as far as steel design goes, and how in optimization, if we get to that level of design, will be incorporated. Again, I'm going to go ahead and ask everybody to uh, mute their microphones. I think I'm getting a little bit of feedback in here. Um, so if everybody could go ahead and uh, check your microphones for me, that would be great. So let's go ahead and start talking about steel design within STAD Pro. So I am located in the United States, and this is our special interest group session for uh, the United States group. So we're going to be talking about steel design using the AISC 360. Now, within the AISC 360 design in STAD Pro, I'm going to be focusing today on basically our rolled steel sections. What we should be aware of is that by using different design codes within STAD Pro, we do have rules or different shapes that we are able to design through the program. As far as the AISC 360 goes, we can design I-shaped sections, including your standard wide flange sections. We can design angles or double angles, steel pipes, steel tubes, that would be your square or rectangular sections, and we can also design channels. While defining these types of sections, we also have some capabilities for adding some additional reinforcement or some built-up section capabilities. So if you had, say, a cover plate um, on the top or bottom flange of an I-shaped section, that is also supported by the program. Now, if I were performing a steel design with basic steel sections that are available today, Okay, let me go ahead and mute the mics. So if we are talking about performing a steel design for today using a standard AISC section, I would expect to be able to find this section automatically available through the databases in STAD Pro. So let me go ahead and just show you where those are found and how you can review the information for those before we dive a little bit deeper into more of the custom customizations that you can make. So in order to access the databases, say I take a simple model. And here, I am going to be working in the analytical modeler today. I just have a simple portal frame created. We're going to move later on into a little bit more of a complex model. But for our purposes right now, this will work. And if I were to want to assign a section to the members within my model from the standard AISC database in the United States, I can go to the Specification tab in my Ribbon Toolbar, access my databases, and go to the USA database. Now, if anybody's located outside the United States, you're going to notice that we also do have several international databases also available. So I'm going to take a look in the USA database. I'm going to go to Rolled Steel. And then I'm going to see all of the shapes available within the American Steel Table. Now, again, I'm going to think about what my eventual goal is in STAD Pro, which for me today, it's performing a full steel design. And I'm going to remember the different shapes that are available for that. And I'm going to make sure that 
my steel design uses those types of shapes if I'm expecting STAD Pro to perform a full design for me. So again, we can support I-shaped sections, we can support channels, angles, tubes, pipes. Uh, several of these different options you're going to notice here, say for angles, um, you can add some complexity just to the standard angle shape. So if you select it here and said single section from table, that would be a single angle. We also have options here if you wanted to add a double angle to that specification. Um, say for eye sections, you can also add top and bottom cover plates and so forth if needed. Now, if you ever wanted some additional information regarding the sections that you're going to assign through the standard database, you can review all those section properties directly within STAD Pro. So again, sticking with this specification tab in the ribbon toolbar, we're going to go to our sections database. Okay, mine appeared on my second screen, so let me drag it on over. And we'll be able to see which database is referenced in the program at this particular moment. So I was looking in the United States, I was looking in Rolled Steel. We can see the one that's bolded, that's the one that's being dragged into the program. These are all automatically stored on your C drive, I believe in the public documents area, um, for um, your information. So they're automatically installed when you install STAD Pro. So I'm going to come down here. I was just looking at wide flange shapes. If I double click this table, I'll be able to see all of the information. I'll be able to see the area of steel, the depth of the member, base of the flange, and so forth. So all of this is stored internally in the program or basically through these files that are installed when your program is installed. What's also nice about these tables is it does reveal the STAD name versus the standard name. Now, if we're talking about wide flange sections, usually the STAD name and the standard name are identical. But when we talk about things like angles, for example, we do have a slightly different um, nomenclature that basically works within the STAD Pro input file. So if you're ever like, what is in L20204, I could come here for that information if I wanted, you know, kind of the standard AISC name. So here for that example, it would be an L2 by 2 by 1 quarter. This that last number within that naming configuration basically means 16 of an inch, 4 16 of an inch would be one quarter. Now, I do not recommend modifying uh, the databases that are installed with the program. I think sometimes that could lead to more issues later on. Um, but you can review all the information in the databases. So you have all the information at your fingertips of what you're going to be, to be using. Now, what if these databases uh, don't quite work for you? What if you need something a little bit more that's not necessarily available through the standard database? It's still available for design of steel. I'm still sticking within the shapes that AISC in STAD Pro allows for, but I don't have that. When would I need this? I don't know, uh, sometimes when you have like a non-typical section, maybe a historical building structure, there are several instances where you might need to go beyond just the standard databases. So what I'm going to do is we're going to quickly talk about how to create a user table, okay? So when we're assigning section properties, you have your properties dialog um, available here. This will link you directly to the specifications tab in the ribbon toolbar. I'm using STAD Pro Connect Edition. We have databases available, we have prismatic sections available, we also have user tables available. The databases are candidates for steel design, user tables are also candidates for steel design. Again, as long as you stick with the, the shapes that we can design within the program. Prismatic sections, however, would not be. They can be obviously incorporated into your analysis. You can define a prismatic section within your model. Uh, but you can't perform a steel design or an optimization using a prismatic section, okay? So let's go ahead and use a user table, and basically a user table is just my way of creating my own database, okay? So I'm going to come up here. Now, creating a user table from scratch is basically a two-step process. I basically need to create the database and then assign it the same way I would from a database that's installed with the program. So I'm going to use the user tab table pull-down menu, and I'm going to start with the top option. Luckily, the two-step process is in order in this pull-down menu that I'm going to look for. 
Now within the select section type, I'm actually going to see all the sections that are, you know, basically available for steel design with the exception of this prismatic option um, below. I'm going to go with a wide flange option. I'm going to create my own table directly within this file. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this is basically I'm creating a wide flange database. If I wanted wide flange and channel sections, I would create two user tables, one for channels, one for wide flange. Once I create a user table, I can go ahead and click the Add button. It knows I'm creating a wide flange section. And then I'll have some options available here. Let me go ahead and quickly put in some information. I'm going to name my section anything I want. And then I'm going to enter the parameters in this column over here. So I am going to enter in my depth. Let's say this is actually, you know what? I would prefer entering this information in inches. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Let's go back to here. I'm going to go back to the user table manager. I'm going with table one and then click add again. OK, now I can see, oh, no, it didn't switch it to inches. Let me just create a new one. OK, add. OK, now I have inches. So I'm going to go with 24 WF by 76. I'm going to go with the depth of section. I'm going to enter my thickness of my flange, my width of my flange. my thickness of my web. OK. I am allowed to create a um, top flange and bottom flange that are of different thickness and different widths. If they are the same, I can leave uh, TF1 and WF1 set to 0, which means basically read in the flange for the one I already specified. OK. Do I have to calculate the cross-sectional area and all that information? I do not. So I can go ahead and just ask the program to go ahead and calculate this for me. This is a powerful form of the, um, the benefits of creating user table directly within the program is that I have the ability to ask Stat Pro to calculate the section properties for me. If you would prefer not, you can go ahead and enter these values yourself if you would like. So let's go ahead and click OK. So this is my database that I'm creating for myself, OK? And I can create as many sections within this wide flange database that I'm interested in. So here is this section. I can keep adding. I can add multiple sections here. Okay. I'm going to add just the one for now. So once I'm finished, let's go ahead and click Done. Now I have my own database. I can assign this to my model using the same steps I would normally from the standard database, except I'm going to select my table instead. So I'm going to go to User Table and then Assign from the table. I'm selecting table two, which is my second one I created using inches. I'm going to select my shape. I'm going to add it to this area, and then it can directly be assigned to my model. So here I'll go ahead and say assign to view. We'll click assign and click yes. Okay. Now that is basically a, the very quick and easy way on how to create your own user table. But now what I want to do is I want to take it a step further. What if I work on multiple STAD Pro models that end up using the same sections? Do I want to create a user table for every single model? I don't. When I create it directly within the program, it basically writes it to my input file. But again, what if I have a bunch of different structures that are all using the same things? I don't want to create the user table in each individual model. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you two different uh, capabilities for basically importing those into a new STAD Pro model. So let me go ahead and I'm going to close this one at this point. Now that we have kind of the basic idea on, on how to, to create that. So the first method I'm going to show you is how to use a seed file. Now, the seed file is new in STAD Pro Connect Edition. I want to say it's for the latest edition, which would be, let's talk about editions, STAD Pro Connect Edition, version 22, update 5. How do you know which STAD Pro you're running? Well, in the STAD Pro start page, you're going to go to your help, and you can go to about STAD Pro. I always recommend updating to the newest version of STAD Pro because you'll get all the newest enhancements that we've added to the program. Also, you will get 
uh, all of the uh, latest code information that gets incorporated. So here you can see I'm running version 22, update 5. Okay, so what I've done is I basically created a blank STAD profile, uh, pro model, with a user table already in its input file. Now, a seed file is basically a template file. It's a template with information that you want to begin your new models with in STAD Pro. So I basically just created a blank model. I have a user table already in it. It's full of sections that I use on multiple projects. And when I'm starting a new project, I don't want to create a new user table within that project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that in. Now, anything that's in your um, input file will be available and will come into your new model when you create it. Okay, so I'm using a seed file to basically get started. The seed file doesn't create, contain anything else other than the user table that I created previously that I'm going to use for multiple projects. So this does have to happen when you create your new model. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new model. I'm going to create an analytical model. I'm going to call it, I'm going to just call mine seed import. And here I have a new option for a model seed file. Again, it's just going to basically populate my new input file with information from another input file. Whatever is in that input file, whether it be loads or nodes or members, would all be candidates for coming into this model. So here I've already created a seed model. I'm going to go ahead and access mine. Now, seed models, I'm working today primarily in the analytical modeler. Seed files can also be created from a basically a blank uh, physical model as well, using basically the same exact workflow. So let's go ahead and attach this here. I'm not giving the program any other information, and I'm just going to go ahead and click Create. I'm creating a new model, and I'm ready to begin my modeling process, but I already have my database loaded. How do I see my database? Here, I can go to the specification area. I can go to user table and assign user table profile. These are all the profiles I already previously created. I basically took a bunch of historical shapes, uh, 16 WF shapes and some 18 WF shapes. I'm going to say I use these on a lot of different models, so I created myself a seed file, and it's ready to be assigned right now. Okay, so we have that option available to you. The next option that I'm going to show you is by using a seed file as an external file. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to basically create an external file for a seed, and then I'm going to show you how to bring an external file in to a sample model. So let me start with a clean model here. I don't want a seed file this time. Let's go with just two. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create an external file that's going to house a database for me. I like to show this workflow because um, you have to decide when you're creating that user file that you want to create it as an external file too. Okay. So let's go back to the specification tab. Again, we're using all of our time right now in this user table option. And this time, before I do that, I'm going to select inches. OK. I'm going to create a wide flange file this time. But this time, I'm going to tell it that I also want to create an external file for it. OK. I'm going to name my file. I'm going to call mine just, I don't know, 24WF section. I'm just going to create one, but then I'm going to bring in one that has already been created. I'm going to locate it somewhere that I would like. I'm just going to put mine on my desktop. OK. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating an external file. The advantage of creating the external file within your STAD Pro environment is, again, I can take advantage 
of the program's ability to calculate all my section properties, my um, uh, area, my moment of inertia, and, and so forth. But the other advantage I have is that basically it's creating a text document for me, and it's putting it in the format that STAD Pro likes. Okay, so uh, basically your external file is going to have things like all those parameters in it, and by creating it within the STAD Pro environment, it will go ahead and um, put it in the format that it likes. And then from here on, you're just going to basically create it the same way you, you normally would. Let me show you an external file that I created um, before this training session that has a bunch of different um, files in it or models in it. Okay, when I open the file, it's going to ask me what, how do I want to open it. I'm going to open it in Notepad and click OK. So this is basically what the user file looks like for a wide flange section. Um, and I basically created this directly within the STAD Pro environment. And again, the advantage I have about creating it from directly within the program instead of trying to write this out into Notepad myself is that it, it basically puts it in the right format, puts all the values where the program wants it. It to be okay so this is just a standard file that the model is going to create for me when I tell it I want it to uh, create an external file now to bring this into my environment I can go ahead and go back to the user table manager I can go ahead and say I want a new table but I want to grab it from an external file and then I'm going to go ahead and grab it from where I want mine again is on my desktop I can grab my table, click open, click OK. These are all the sections. It's automatically going to bring them in. If I want to review what I did in that external file, I can take a look at it right here just by double clicking on the section. Now, if I wanted to, I am ready to go ahead and assign anything from that external file, that was this one, into my model. Now, a couple of advantages that we have for using an external file versus maybe a seed file or creating it yourself within your STAD Pro environment. So I wrote down three advantages basically as, as I saw it. First of all, it's not exactly writing it to your input file. So your input file would be clean. It would be uh, organized. Okay, That's something that I like because I do like to visit my input file um, on occasion. In addition to that, if you create an external file, for your custom database that you created for yourself, that information can be shared with others. It can also be imported in both the analytical modeler and the physical modeler, the same MILE format. I don't need two separate seeds. One external file will be able to work with both areas of the program, which would be important to me if I'm kind of going back and forth between an analytical modeling and a physical modeling workflow. The last advantage, as I see it again, uh, would be that I can incorporate these before, um, basically somewhere further along in my modeling process than when I first create my model. The seed method is great if I think about it when I first create my model. Um, if I'm further along, I've already modeled some information, I want to get a user table in there, uh, an external file will allow me to do it basically at any portion during my modeling process. So for those three reasons, I kind of like that external file file route. Now that we've gone through that information, let me go ahead and fast forward to basically saying, well, how am I going to use this? What am I going to use this for uh, later on? And what I like to talk about when I talk about databases is talk about how it relates to steel design, specifically in optimization. Because in optimization, I'm basically asking STAD Pro to offer up some optimized sections for me. So it needs to search in the database for that. So let's try to understand basically how those two things are connected. And I've basically created, again, I'm going to be working primarily in the analytical modeler today. I've created a model that contains both standard sections from the database and uh, custom sections from an external user table. So let's go ahead and take a look at what so let's go ahead and take a look at 
what we have. And while we do that, let's also just have a quick refresher on optimization workflows and how they relate to performing a full design within STAD Pro. So let's take a look at our model and we're going to talk about the SEAL optimization workflow. So let's go ahead and fast forward in our model and I'm going to take a look at the properties area. Now we're going to take a look at the properties that are assigned to my particular model. So here we can see that my roof beams, my roof girders, and my floor beams, that's what I'm calling all of the items highlighted, are W12 by 26. That was identified from the standard steel databases. I have some HSS tube sections, 8 by 8 by 1 half, that were identified from the HSS table within the US database. I have some angle sections. I have some steel rods that were defined as prismatic sections. And then I also have a section that I pulled from a user table. Okay. So let's understand how the workflow is going to happen and which of these are candidates for steel design and optimization in STAD Pro. Now, as we do that, let's have a quick refresher on your steel optimization workflow as it relates to um, your STAD Pro model. Now, within STAD Pro, performing an optimization will be a multi-step process. Every model, because STAD Pro performs a full finite element analysis, needs to be assigned an initial section property. We just saw that was assigned through the properties dialog um, within our STAD Pro model. So everything is assigned an initial section property. We are going to perform an analysis. What does that analysis do? It instructs STAD Pro to calculate the loads and the member forces using those initial section properties that were defined. We are then going to be asking the program, once loads and stresses are available, to perform an optimization. How does it perform that optimization? Basically, I'm asking it to optimize each individual analytical member within the model. While it does that, I have some options to control the optimization. Okay, The first way it performs the optimization is it automatically looks to whichever database I used to define my initial section. So we saw that from the standard database, I assigned some wide flange sections, some angles, and some HSS tube sections. When it performs the optimization for each of those different options, it's going to go back to the table that was used to define the initial sections. So if you have defined a wide flange section as your initial section, it will go back to the same exact database you used, the same exact shape that you used. Now, how does that relate to a custom database, a user table that we defined. Same thing. It's going to go back to my user table and look for optimized sections within that user table. So whatever database identifies your first section, that's where it's going to go to find your optimized section property. The other thing what we have to think about when performing an optimization is we may want some additional control over that. Do we want to allow the entire database to be a candidate for optimization, or do we want to limit it in some way? We do have some parameters available for us to be able to limit it. We can identify a maximum depth of member, a minimum depth of member, or also a profile of member. The profile would be specific if you're using the standard database. So for example, if I would like the program, if I have a wide flange section assigned to a particular group of members, and I know it's going to assign another wide flange, but I want specifically a W12, I can assign a profile parameter saying pick only a W12, and that will basically truncate the database for that selection uh, command to just what's within those parameters that I set up. So we do have some control over that. The maximum and minimum depth do work with user tables. Um, so keep that in mind. Those are candidates to help you. Now, while we are performing an analysis and design, it's also important to understand that STAD Pro performs this analysis and design based on the analytical members. And this is true whether or not you create a physical model or you create an analytical model. The design, according to the AISC, in STAD Pro is done on the analytical members. Now, there are times when I want uh, certain members within the model, especially if segments of an analytical member represent a 
complete physical member for them to be defined as the same size. So to further control my optimization, I can assign a group parameter to basically group groups of sections together. So I'm performing an optimization. And what can happen after you perform an optimization? Well, my initial analysis considered my initial section properties that were assigned. When I get to the full design, I want to basically perform that analysis again because I want my new optimized shapes or sizes to have the appropriate loads. And loads can distribute when section properties change, especially if they change significantly from what your initial section properties were. So what our workflow is for optimization is, is it's a simple four-step process. We analyze the model for initial section properties, we optimize. Then we analyze the model for your optimized section properties. Then we just double check to make sure that those are still within your code limits, interaction ratio, less than whatever limit you set up, typically your 1.0. So let's go ahead and take a further look at our model that I'm taking a look at right now. I have a wide flange section. It's going to go ahead and look in the US database for that. I have an HSS tube and I have an angle. All of these are candidates for optimization. It will use the standard database, whichever shape I initially assigned. Then I have a prismatic section assigned for some, basically some round steel bars that I have within my model. Now StatPro has the ability to consider these in all of its calculations for the analysis side of the workflow. We can get stresses, we can get forces within those steel rods. StatPro does not perform a design, a full design with interaction ratios and so forth on prismatic section properties. So I'm going to remember that this one, I'm going to perform a further hand calculation myself to ensure that that steel rod is, is appropriately sized. Okay. And then finally, again, I have my user table section. I use my external file in order to bring this into, into my model. Okay. Now, let's take a look at our command structure that I incorporated here. So if we can see where my cursor is, I am performing the initial analysis. I do this after my loads and before I get into design. So I'm performing my initial analysis. Then I am specifying my design code. I did set up some requirements here using the dmax, the dmin parameters in order to basically limit that. I have, I have some of them where I said, well, I want a maximum or minimum depth to be eight inches. For my user table, I basically said, I actually want a minimum of 17 inches for whatever reason. For some of these sections, if I'm using the standard database, I can also use that profile parameter. So here I said, I want a W12, okay? So I can control the optimization workflow. Now I'm moving into my optimization command. This is the point where I'm saying perform an optimization. I'm doing that with the select command. Now, after it performs the optimization, I'm allowed to basically control it a little further with the group command. As I mentioned, I'm interested in, especially since I do have some situations where say girders or columns have been broken up into smaller analytical members, I want to ensure that the same section property gets assigned to each of them. Now for this model, I went ahead and made the decision that I want all my columns in the model to be assigned the same section property. So I went ahead and assigned a group parameter. So my first group parameter in this particular model is assigned to my columns. It means all the columns will be assigned the same size. Now when it performs the optimization, it'll assign a different size to each analytical member within the model. When it sees it later on in a group, it's going to say, okay, take all the members that were assigned to that group. Whichever one gave you the largest stresses, the largest section property that was assigned, I'm going to then assign it to the same group. Of course, you're not going to want to include different members within the same group that have a different shape assigned to them. So for this particular model, I grouped all my columns together. I grouped my, what I'm calling my roof girders together. And then I also grouped my floor girders together. After new optimized sizes are determined, I'm asking the program to perform another analysis. And then with the results of that analysis, 
I'm asking the program to go ahead and double check to make sure everything is still passing a code check. I don't need to redefine some of these parameters up here, such as the um, yield strength of steel, for example, is going to inherit whichever uh, design parameters up here to the next design workflow down here. So as long as something didn't change, I can go ahead and move forward just to a standard, standard code check. Now that we've gone through our workflow, let's go ahead and see that in action and see it basically pull from the database considering those optimization parameters I specified. So I'm going to go ahead and perform an analysis at this point. Optimization might take a little bit longer than a um, standard steel design because it is performing some additional um, iterations. Uh, this one shouldn't take that long. It's still relatively small. And as a reminder, the STAD Pro Advanced License does perform uh, an analysis uh, quicker um, if that's available to you. OK. My analysis and design are complete. Here, I'm going to notice that I don't have any errors or warnings. So far, so good. And I like to go to my output file when it is complete. Now, upon design, I have two different design commands in my model. One was in the parameter 1 folder. That was my optimization. And the other one was in my parameter 5 folder, which was basically my final code check. OK, so I'm going to have those options available here. Here, within the parameter 1 folder, I'll be able to see each of the members that was included in that optimization. So let's go ahead and just take a look at what that looks like. So here for member one, I am provided this profile. This is the optimized section size. If you notice, all of my columns were initially assigned an HSS eight by eight by one half. Here we found that it was able to get a little bit smaller. So then optimization won't just always upsize your members, it can downsize your members too if the original section size is understressed. Okay. So here I can see an HSS eight by eight by three eighths was available and I can see its interaction ratio. It is less than what I had specified or requested. Next, I can move on to my next column. Looks like this one in HSS 8 by 8 by 1 half worked. Now, the program is doing the optimization in the parameter 1 folder. It's not actually doing the grouping yet. That will come later. So I'm not worried at this point that my two columns are two different sizes, even though I told it I wanted my columns to be all the same size. That comes later. And let's go ahead and scroll on down. And I wrote down that member 27 is actually one of the members that used my uh, user table. So initially, I had assigned each of my sections as a 16 WF section from my user table. It's going to go back to the user table. It's not going to the standard database. It's going for wherever I assigned that initial section property from. Now, for these floor girders that basically represent where the you know, user table is assigned, I said I wanted a minimum depth using the dmin parameter of 17 inches. So I can see that actually it bumped it up to an 18 WF because that satisfied the requirements. My user table has 16 inch deep and 18 inch deep sections within it. It was able to find that user table and select an alternate size while still considering the optimization constraints that I put upon it. So I can go ahead and scroll on down. I can see this interaction ratio and here's a bunch of the other members within that girder. Let's scroll down a little bit further. I'm going to go to the end of basically my optimization because at the end of the optimization, I've asked the program to group my sections together. The first group, that would be this one, was my column group. Here I can see that it decided that all of the columns should be an HSS 8 by 8 by 1 half, considering that the worst case scenario for any of my columns revealed or led them to this section. It was basically based, um, you can also see the critical uh, member was, it was grouped on basically member number 11, that would be analytical member number 11, controlled the design of that particular group. Next we go to my roof girders, you can see here it settled on a W10 by 33, again using the standard database. 
Then finally, I grouped my members. One, two, oh, here it is. For my third group was on my floor girders. This was basically based on my user table. It decided an 18 WF50 should be assigned to all of them. Now that we've settled on new optimized sizes, we are going to re-perform the analysis. What this will do is it'll consider a new stiffness matrix based on the section properties that were then assigned. And that is happening here. And then it's going into parameter five. This is basically just doing a final code check to make sure that the new section properties pass the design considering the new forces that are present in them, considering the new analysis that just took place. So here we can see, say for member number one, we just saw that all my columns is selected in HSS, eight by eight by one half. I see that here and I see its interaction ratio. And then let's go back to member 27, which is using my user table. Here I can see the section that was determined and the new uh, interaction ratio. So all of this is available in the output file. I always think that kind of understanding how things are laid out in the output file um, helps me understand where I'm going. In addition to that, I can see all of this information in the post processor. So I'm gonna access the post processor at this point. Now, newer and not this latest version of STAD Pro, but I wanna say one or two before that, maybe update three or update four, I can't quite recall. We added the ability to perform multiple design checks in the same model, which actually we always had that, but we are able to see the results of each of those design checks in the post processor now. So here I can see I have parameter one folder and parameter five folder. So I can kind of focus on what it is I'm trying to, to look at. And we just kind of explained how to kind of see your command structure, see the parameters. I know parameter one is my optimization. I know parameter five is my final code check. This comes in very helpful for any time you're running um, more than one design command in the same model. I do that in an optimization workflow. I'll also utilize a multiple design workflow in a model where I'm checking both strength and deflection, for example. So if I want to check my strength design um, and then check my serviceability design, they're probably going to use different types of load combinations. Uh, I'm able to get all of that information now in the post processor, whereas previous versions of STAD Pro would only show the results of the most recent or the last design that was performed unless you kind of told it otherwise. So here I can see the results of, of each one. Let's go ahead and take a look at our utilization table. I'm looking specifically for parameter five. Here I can see the analysis property and the design property. The design property is what was considered for the final code check. You could see here, if I go to parameter one, I can see the initial section property plus the optimized size. I just saw that information in the output file. Again, let's go ahead and navigate down to 27. And here we have that information. Again, it's pulling it from the user table. It's not going to the standard database. It's going to whichever database you use to identify your initial section property. Now at this point with optimization, I do like to discuss basically how do you finish your workflow, because when you do an optimization STAD Pro, it doesn't automatically assign the new section properties uh, to your model, okay? So if we went back to the analytical modeling mode, we'd see the same initial section properties are still assigned to the model. So at this point, you have an option. You can go ahead and manually assign the new section properties to your, your model. We're gonna go ahead and help you out by Let's take a look at what that looks like. We have gone ahead and um, kind of started that process by basically grabbing all the section properties that were determined during the optimization. We basically added it to the properties window, but we don't go ahead and override your input file because basically making these changes would override your input file. We don't know if you want to kind of retain that initial information. So everything that was determined as a candidate for optimization was added to this properties dialog, and then you have the choice to 
go ahead and officially assign it or basically keep it as it was. As a reminder, this round bar was not performed to design. I have analysis results, but not full design results. So that is available if you want, like, say, ultimate control over, over your design. If, after reviewing all the information in your optimization, you are happy with 100% of everything that we've, you know, determined through the optimization process, you do have this option over here to go ahead and update properties. What this is basically going to do is it's going to take all the new optimized section properties and then officially assign them to your model. We'll ask you again if you want to make sure that you're interested in that and then you can confirm that with yes and then you can move on your way in, in your workflow. So what I hoped to accomplish today is to basically show you how initial section properties, whether they be from the standard database or from a user table, can be incorporated in both a steel design and an optimization workflow. Hopefully, you can see the value of creating a user table, and hopefully you've learned a few different methods on how to create that user table, whether it be directly within your STAD Pro model, which creates it in your input file. You can create it in a seed file and then bring it into your input file. You're going to do that when you create new models. Or you can create an external file. And again, the external file can be brought into the analytical modeler or the physical modeler at any point through your modeling process. And when an optimization is performed, it goes back to whichever database you used initially to assign to your section. Now, I have a few extra things I want to go ahead and discuss. And then I'm going to open it up. We'll have a few minutes. Um, available for for questions. So a couple of things I want to show you. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put links in the chat window. I think that that would be easier. So let me go ahead and I'm going to open up the chat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a few different websites that I think might interest you and you'll have um, available if you wanted to maybe go ahead and bookmark it. These are sites that I basically um, recommend. The first one is to the Bentley Learn server. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a link to the Bentley Learn server. Now, through the Bentley Learn server, you'll be able to see all of the training courses that we have available. Some of those training courses will be available for live instruction, which will be similar to a special interest group session, but it'll be more depth, step-by-step, hands-on approach. We also have on-demand recordings and data sets available for everything we teach live. You can do at your own pace through watching videos and obtaining the data set models and the step-by-step -step exercises. So that's available on the Bentley Learn server. In addition to that, I am recording this session today. I'm going to make this available on the, or we're going to put this available on the Bentley Learn server so you can view this at a later date or say some of your colleagues weren't able to attend, you can go ahead and direct them there. We have a special interest group uh, learning path available on the Bentley Learn server and you'll be able to find this there. I will be putting the data set model that I'm using up on the Bentley Learn server with that recording. So if anybody would like this model, go ahead and use it. I'm going to give a um, quick caution to that sort of thing, though, I went ahead and created my own user table. Please don't use my user table because I want to make sure if you're creating your own models that you are 100% comfortable with the um, properties that you're putting in. So I definitely say recommend that approach. The next area I want to point your attention to is the Bentley Events page. Let's go ahead and put that in here. You can register for new upcoming SIGs on a variety of different products. Um, from the Bentley events page. Also, again, any of the special interest group sessions that we conducted in 2020 are available on the events page in on-demand fashion. You're going to go to that page, and you can filter on product. And in the category field, you can go ahead and say webinar live. That would be for anything upcoming that you want to attend in person. Not in person, but you know, virtually through your machine in person. Or um, webinar on-demand to see anything that's already been conducted. The next area, which I'm going to go ahead and drag this area onto my screen, is the RAM and STAD area of Bentley Communities. This is a great place to go in case you want to uh, ask questions or review some of the information that we have available. 
through that page, you can go to the forum area. You can ask questions. We do have experts um, reviewing this information and uh, should be able to um, answer you. You can see here people have been asking questions. We do um, respond to them through our technical support group. If you go to the blog area, you can lots of times be up to date about what's coming up. Um, lots of times we'll let you know when new releases of the product are happening. I will sometimes let people know when I have uh, trainings or workshops coming up. If you find somebody here that um, you like attending their stuff, you can always feel free to follow them. Um, sometimes I'll post on training opportunities. Um, sometimes the product managers, like say Carlos Aguera, for STAD Pro will also post when new versions of the software are available. So I definitely encourage you to look in that area. If you go to the wiki area, we do have articles posted here. Um, some of these are um, update uh, release notes. Some of them might be just extra technical information or collateral that we have available on different products. It is organized by product. And finally, we have an ideas area, which is relatively new. So if there's something you wish the program had, uh, but you don't see it in the program, you can always be, be free to uh, put in a suggestion. So we'll call this our suggestion box, this ideas area. Like, I wish Sad Pro would do this. Definitely um, would, be, would be helpful for us to know if there are things that, that we can kind of help you with. And then the last area I wanted to point you to, and then I promise I'll get to some questions, is um, the G2 site. Um, if you would like to provide any, you know, basically leave a review for STAD Pro, um, you can feel free to access this area. And it's basically kind of like a Yelp review. You're going to basically um, enter a review. Um, it's voluntary. Anybody who's interested in entering a view, review for STAD Pro, please feel free to go ahead and do so. Okay, now that we've gone through that, let me just go ahead and check the question window to see if there are any questions. Again, you can use the widget at the top of the screen in order to access the questions. Looks like I talked for quite a bit today, so I'll try to get through um, some of these questions. Um, someone asked, what's the meaning of the term seed file? We use the term seed file. It's basically a template file. It's basically a STAD Pro model that you already created that has information in this input file. Any information in the input file would then be brought into a new model when you create it, okay? I've used this work approach. It's a newer feature within STAD Pro. I just showed you how I used it for a user file. Um, I've used it before with things like load combinations. I think it could be super helpful for stuff like that or basically giving me a, a head start. I would put things in a seed file that, or basically it's a, just a STAD Pro model that will eventually be used as a seed file. I'll put things in that might be common to like a lot of my projects, okay? I won't put things in like nodal locations and members and stuff like that. I will maybe put some other things in there like I wanna go ahead and get a head start with a user table or I wanna head start with some of my basic load cases that I use on like say every single model of mine. I might create that in a seed file. It's basically just a template. Someone asked a question about aluminum design, and I'm going to go ahead and um, probably table table that one. Um, today's focus is more on um, steel design today. We do have some capabilities for doing some aluminum design, but the codes that we use in STAD Pro are fairly dated. Um, so we have some information on that in the help file on aluminum design, but I would kind of uh, take a second look at that to see if the code is appropriate for what you're, you're trying to do. Uh, someone asked, is this presentation available as a recording? It will be. Give us about a week to put it on the Bentley Learn server. I put a link to the Learn server in the chat window.
someone asked, how do I access the output file? The output file is available as long as an analysis has been performed. The output file in STAD Pro Connect Edition can be found in the utilities area under analysis output. If you just performed an analysis, it'll give you an option to go directly to the output. But if you already closed that dialog and want to get there, the analysis output um, icon will be available. If you hadn't performed an analysis, I believe this would be grayed out because it does require an analysis or design to have been performed. Okay, looks like that is all the questions I see. Um, so again, please give us a little bit of time to go ahead and put this on the Bentley Learn server, probably about a week. I'm going to go ahead and throw this model up there as well. Um, if anybody has any, any further um, questions, um, please feel free to go ahead and go to the Bentley community site in the forum area. Okay, so thank you everybody for coming to today's session. Again, we do conduct special interest group sessions for STAD Pro, typically on the third Thursday of each month at 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you are in a different time zone, that would be the same time as it is in New York City. So that's usually a good way to remember it. I believe, if I understand Global Meridian Time correctly, that would be 6 p.m., global meridian time, but double check that on me if you would. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming to this session. We will be having another one in March. And other than that, um, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. I hope everybody has a good 2021 and stays healthy. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Hopefully, you found some information that you can incorporate into your workflows in the future within STAD Pro.